what's going on? It's Hunter again here from Hybrid Fitness, and today we're talking about what the heck does your in-body mean? Well, you're gonna find out right now. The in-body, I just did one, and if you wanna know how to perform your in-body, make sure you check out the link in the description down below. There are lots of parts to it. Now, if you look at your in-body, you're gonna see at the very top, there is a body composition analysis, and it's broken into four categories. You're gonna see total body water, dry lean mass, body fat mass, and then your weight. The total body water, the dry lean mass, and the body fat mass all equal the weight. Where everybody's a little bit different, there are really no expectations here, unless you've done an in-body before. Then you can use your previous in-body to reference this and see which parts of your body have increased or decrease so you can see if you're progressing closer, further away, or maintaining where you're at. Now, as we move down lower, you're gonna see the muscle fat analysis. And this is gonna give you an idea based off of your height and your weight and your age where a doctor might tell you to be. So you'll notice that there's an up arrow, a down arrow, and then a straight line. Now, if you wanna be in the healthy range, okay, then you want to be in that straight line. But remember, this is just averages, right? So. You know, some people are born uh, taller and stronger and thicker bones, and other people are more petite. So take this with a grain of salt, but just know these are based off of averages and gives you an idea of where you might want to be to achieve the best health. So you'll see weight, skeletal muscle mass, and body fat mass. Now, as we move down, you're going to see the obesity analysis, and this is measured in the same way with the, with the up arrow, the down arrow in the straight line. Now your BMI is simply a look at how is your weight to height ratio. And there's a lot of controversy around BMI. You know, you can have people who are very strong and muscular who, ex who would appear extremely fit and their BMI would mark them as overweight. Now, does that mean they're unhealthy? No, but they have lots of muscle. On the flip side, if you do carry more weight, even if you're more muscular, that could place more stress on your organs and on your muscles and could still have a long-term health effect because you're still putting more output throughout your life. So just because you're super strong and fit doesn't mean that BMI uh, is something to completely neglect, but it doesn't mean that uh, you're overweight either. So wherever you're at in your fitness journey, just kind of take a look at that and analyze it in a way that works for you. Then you've got your percentage body fat, and this is simply that, out of your total weight, how much body fat do you have? And it will give you a range of where you might wanna be and where you currently are. As we move down, you'll see segmental lean analysis, which gives you an idea about where your muscle mass may be held in each of your limbs. Now, this one isn't overly important or applicable. It's just kind of a cool number to look at. And although it's really cool, I would take this one with a grain of salt um, I'm sure it's accurate to an extent, but also very hard to pinpoint the exact amount of muscle that you have in each limb. As we move up to the top right here, you're gonna see body fat dash lean body mass control. And so this gives you an idea of, hey, based off of the information that, that they gathered from your body, what would be the most effective way for you to reach a quote unquote healthy body fat percentage? So if we went to the obesity analysis again, what would it take for us to get that middle number in the percentage of body fat analysis on the straight line? So for me here, it says that I should lose 0.2 pounds of body fat mass, and that would be the quickest way for me to do that. But for you, it might say, hey, you should gain muscle mass because maybe you don't have a lot of body fat, you should just gain muscle mass. So if you gain muscle mass, your body fat percentage will go down. If you lose body fat, your body fat percentage will go down. There's multiple ways of getting there. It's just about finding what's best for you. Below that, you can see your lean body mass, which is simply all of the fat removed uh, from your body and just what is lean, okay, what is lean about you. And then finally, the basal metabolic rate gives you an idea of how many calories you burn when you're at rest, when you're not doing anything. So if you just laid down all day, maybe like when you did when you had strep throat in school when you were a kid, okay, that's how many calories you're gonna burn. And then finally, at the very bottom, you're gonna see a graph. So every time you do an in-body, it will measure your progress compared to the last time on some of the most important metrics. We've got weight, we've got percentage body fat, and then of course we've got skeletal muscle mass. And it's gonna measure that so you can see how you're progressing over time and see a trend on, hey, this is where you were then, and this is where we're headed. So, an in-body is a great tool to measure your progress, definitely, Put it to use here at Hybrid Fitness. Now look, if you liked this video and it was helpful, hit that subscribe button down below. 
and give a like because I like kittens and kittens are cute. So hit like down below. Until next time, my friends, small steps, big results.